we, is it going to cut our heads? Like, no, we're recording, mate. No, oh. look, it's live. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you can tell we're in person. Normally when we record a podcast, well, actually at the retreats, this is a tradition now, isn't it? Record a podcast before yeah. Yeah. we uh, run our next retreat. So you can see we've got, if you're watching this on video, you can see the incredible background behind us, beautiful decor. Yeah. Sonia, yeah. Uh, the owner of this space, wanted to make clear that this is on the way out. This is this is remnants <laughs> pre-renovation that's happening here. I mean, it doesn't really need a renovation. I mean, look at the space. Like the let's, let's, let's we're almost the, ready. We're, we're almost ready. ready. We've got a um, few boxes on the floor, but the chairs are in a circle. Um, gong set up, stage. Got the uh, incredible light in the center. All the whiteboards, the wisdom that oh, yeah. pour two, out of us. Two whiteboards. Two, yeah. yeah it's getting better so and better as we come in here. So um, we got a full house. We got yeah, but the, I just want to go back to oh, the, the space, Guy yeah. Like I don't, I don't want to like badmouth Guy Mia in any way because it is an incredible space to work out of. And um, we do all our work from here. Well, it's, exactly, it's a deep place. So if you run years. retreats, don't come here because. No. You'll not allow us to get our spot next year when we book them in. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot to us in. Yeah, we're, we're nestled in and we're in May. I've got a beanie on. It is getting cold, um, but it's, the sun is actually shining outside. I'm, I'm really, really shocked to see you in a beanie. And I, I don't. Like, yeah. you're usually the, the hot one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, take it while you can, mate. <laughs> All right, go on. Just so, run your podcast. Okay, we are. We, we we're, we're waffling now. But uh, we, we have like many conversations and we want to, every time we record a podcast, we want to add value and create something out there and, and share with you guys, uh, wherever you're listening in the world, and some of the lessons that we learned or the challenges that we see on a, on a regular basis by being in front of a lot of people now. And the topic came up this morning because we're, we're currently writing a book. Well, it's in the infancy stages of a book. One of our goals is to actually between myself, um, I almost called you Petra, Matt and Petra, um, is to is to bring a book forward in 2024 of a lot of the, the wisdom and the work that we've learned over the years. Anyway, digressing from that, we started to lean into a big theme that will be about the soul. And from the conversations we're having with the, the self-development industry in general, because we were talking about some of our own experiences over the years. And, and I love all the experiences I've had through all the different seminars and retreats and workshops that I've kind of attended over the last 20, 20 years, probably when I, when I started leaning into it, they've all served me at some way. And I think the biggest key with any of this work, whether it's spiritual self-development or inner self-development or however you want to frame it, is that the journey never ends. That's one thing I want to say as well, that the more I'm learning and asking questions, the more I'm learning. It's mind-blowing, really. And I, and I think that's one of the, um, I'm already going off on a tangent, but that's one of the misconceptions with a lot of this work, no matter what part of the industry you go in, is that there's like a golden nirvana that we get to, and then we can sort of put our feet up and yeah, we've we're, we're there and we've made it. But if if you start look at the deeper work, growth is essential for progression in general, whether you as an individual or as a collective of humanity. So we kind of need that pressure to a degree to for us to continue to evolve and learn. And the moment that we think that we get, we got it in the bag is the moment uh, we get humbled every time. <laughs> so is there anything you want to add to all of that I've just shared? I've been trying to keep up with you, mate. Okay. It's, it's morning. We just, you know, we had a late night excited. setting up. It's, I no, slept it's amazing. No, Honestly, I had the best night's sleep ever. Which is, right. okay. I'm great to hear about your sleep, yeah. but let's just stay in point here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more grateful that you had a good sleep than anyone. I work next to you for the next three days. Um, no, which, the things that popped out at me then were this evolution, this constant evolution that you're talking about. And it's this idea at the beginning, you said self-development. And the, the, I think that the thing that often gets overlooked is that they, we're, we're developing towards a self and we have an idea of who that self is when we get into this work. But the more that I lean into this work, the more I expand that definition of the self and who I am. Mm -hmm. 
And so it starts to then relinquish the grasp of the body, the mind, the emotions as I, who I am. And it, it, it nurtures a relationship to the larger part of the self that I am, which is the, the soul component or the spirit. Capital S. Capital S self yeah. instead of small self. Mm -hmm. So that then leads to what you were talking about in the how, you know, when you think you've got it all sorted, then you get humbled. And it's like, it's that then um, breakdown or, or breaking down of the self that then allows for the emergence of the, the expanded self to start to reveal. And so it's like, that is, that is the actual process of evolution, isn't it? Mm. It's, a, it's a breaking down to release the wisdom and the, the growth into something new to create, to re recapitulate that structure then into a, a greater version of the self. There needs to be disorder for then to be reorder. Yeah. And that reorder is at a higher level of consciousness. Yeah. Ultimately. Yeah. And that's how we evolve. Right. And then that starts to take us into this idea of what the business is called live in flow mm -hmm. and what your podcast let it in. Right. Mm -hmm. Both those concepts then are a relinquishing of the grasp of the identity that we hold of that small self and an embracing of the ever expanding, evolving larger self. Yes. But what came up in the conversation as well, and one of, not a bugbear, but a, I, I guess it's a lesson, because again, we're saying every, all experiences are lessons at the end of the day. But when I first started leaning into the, the self-development industry per se, it was from a very ego-driven place, unconsciously, hmm. because it's about like, like all the, a lot of the work out there is how to make more money, how to, how to create more freedom in your life. And they really talk to these pain points of the ego, I felt. And, and I could get myself in a place where I started learning the concepts and the work of actually how to follow a structure of how to make more money, how to create more freedom in my life, how to live life on my terms and, and you know, all these very appealing things. Cause I, you know, it only came up on one of my podcasts the other day, but with Robert Gilbert, my two strongest values are love and freedom. Mm. You know, who won one more of that, you know, and, and money is a, aspect that we need to function in like we have enough challenges in life as there is mm. if then money becomes a, a, a challenge as well you just you know you just you're, throw, on the back foot. you're on the back foot even more you know so i understand that and i've had to work around a lot of, uh, around my money language over the years and my belief systems around it especially growing up with, without really ever seeing money pulling it all back there was always an element as I lent into this work and as I grew and actually a lot of this work allowed me to lean into having success of my last supplement company, yeah. even through about six or seven years of pain before that with the stock trading, not, not, not many, I don't talk about that much. <laughs> I've heard the stock trading stories. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's tragic. But it's tragic. <laughs> yeah, it's just, oh, you'll be feeling very sorry for me if I shared that with you. Um, but the point is, is that the whole time I was learning the concepts and everything, I wasn't really going deep enough in to nurture the, the soul self that wanted to come through more and more and actually start to unblock or, or release the energy of that I feel is held within me and, and within my energy field of belief systems that were, were kind of um, fogging the lens of my perception of who I thought I was and myself and how I showed up on a daily basis. Mm. So even getting to the point of where I felt in my own pinnacle of 180 Nutrition, the supplement company, where I actually got to a point where I was thinking, wow, I'm paying myself really well. I've got a very nice place. I can, I went on, you know, I had the Ducati. There was all these things, but then I'm still haven't got to the root that I actually had been driving the, the, the chase the whole time, but it was always an external. Mm. And that's my, I guess my bugbear in some respects with the self-development work. And it's like, well, wow. Why, why aren't we going just for the root of the, 
the issues, going deep. Yeah. Hence why we do what we do, right? Like. Yeah. Now, as you're talking, I remember this Ramdas quote that I just saw the other day, mm -hmm. and he said something along the lines of, um, you know, people think that enlightenment is is going out and, and creating a world that brings you freedom and happiness. This is true. Enlightenment is actually being happy and free in the world that you're in. Oh. <laughs> Right? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? And that's what it comes down to because it's the discomfort that we start to feel that's pointing in a direction towards where there's a resistance in us from allowing our authentic true self to emerge into our lives that we then disregard and say, well, if I get the Ducati, get the job that's uh, the, the business is successful, get the money, get the relationship, then I'll be happy. Yeah. And but, 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 we don't even deal with it. The truth of what's going on no but the, the problem is i i can guarantee everyone listening and even myself included have been very guilty of this hmm. you've been nodding your head going yeah of course and then but that's the that's the the, the but we all want it right? it's all part of the pursuits all part of life why not why not have the riches as well and the experience but it's putting the putting the richness within and then it will echo externally exactly but we we keep buying into so we can nod our heads and, and intellectualize this and agree mm. with it. Mm. But how often can you ask yourself, do you truly go deep with yourself mm. and actually start digging around mm. and constantly exploring and removing the layers? And do those layers really ever end? Mm. You know, because I've gone through a shitload. <laughs> <laughs> All the time, I think, oh, finally, you know, and then and mm. then there's more, and then there's more. But also, it, I think through that, your your perception of reality starts to to broaden as well and shift, and as you you become more attuned to the subtleties of of what's available, mm. which is way more exciting. But I think we look at that as a as a problem. Is that there's 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 something that needs to be revealed and released and healed and like we often that's need a that really as, a, good, yeah. as a problem. Yeah, because oh, 'cause I'm but, broken. And, yeah, I'm, I'm broke. Yeah. It's, it's not working, my life isn't functioning the way, the relationships aren't the way that I want, like I've got to fix something. And it's like it's like within because we're actually then uh vilifying the essence of evolution yes. of which we are. And when we actually embrace that and welcome in that flow of life that's wanting to shift us, transform us, then we start to find this rhythm with that life. And I think this is what really excites me is that then, because for a long time I, I, I really strong-willed, right? And I would always like drive myself towards goals. I'd set goals. I'd be very disciplined. I'd, you know, do things. And, and I think if I do these goals, if I tick off this list. Vision board? You know, vision board. Yeah, I had a few of those. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you have a vision. You look, and then you try and get somewhere. But it's, it, was, it wasn't until I realized that that is all a manufacturing of my mind in this moment from the place of disconnect to a larger expression that's wanting to emerge so i started to relinquish that grasp and starting then i think it was it robert gilbert that was talking about this on your podcast about the the eastern and the western philosophies of the meditation where, where did i hear it um so keep so, going <laughs> <laughs> one of the, the the western philosophy of meditation is actually then manifesting and imposing themselves onto the yes the field and the, and the, and the creating on the field, yeah. and then the eastern philosophy yeah, yeah through an emotion yeah. and the visioning and all that sort yeah. of thing where the western is then allowing their vision to drop in yes allowing it to be inspire in silence. us yeah be in, be in the you, silence you, only, you, you need both you definitely need both but it, it's it's the yeah it's like a yin and yang there's well, almost like, like, a, like a male and a female kind of yeah um, component of yeah. creation mm. Is, is the allowing of that creative impulse to then inspire you, and then you need the the drive of that then into form, mm. and that's the, that's the, the dance. Absolutely. And I, and I think a lot of times the, the there's a void of being in the space because in the in the space and in the silence is then where everything can start to emerge, and and the greater possibilities of what exists out there can start to then inspire your life. And when we sit in that space of, you know guide me show me show me the way 
And <laughs> you only just said yeah. that the other day. You've been practicing. Yeah, every every, every day, and and it's and it starts to show up. But I think that this is where it comes into leaning into manifestation then as well, mm. because one of the the key things I feel from manifesting whatever it is is that it from anyway it might be a belief or but I really feel it needs to be in alignment of the core essence of you and your values and what lights you up and what gets you enthusiastic so when you're already on the, that dance that 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 life everything becomes effortless so you're not trying to manifest something into creation because you think it's going to make you happy and fulfill a void that's not going to heal you how the fuck is mm. that going to heal you mm. right mm. how is that going to be true growth and healing from that it's a band-aid like it's a, we it's, all know that exactly We've right it's the pill point. yeah it's the manifestation pill yeah. Right? And we buy into that that's the, that seduction and the shots, the right? But if it's like, actually, I'm actually in a place where I've been working inwardly on myself over the years and revealing the layers and, and healing the components I want to reveal themselves, whether you believe it's from this lifetime or many or an inherited ancestral lineage. Oh, right? here you go. Down yeah, there, no. you just add that in there. Right? Yeah, throw it or whatever, okay. right? Right. You know, it doesn't matter <laughs> whose it is or what it is and everything. It's a layer, right? And you yeah. can start to detach. But then but then as you in that you your your core essence, like you says, wants to come through more and more. Mm -hmm. And there's that and I always remember my beautiful friend Chris, Chris Tate saying you guys just follow your enthusiasm mm. if you follow that it's never gonna let you down yeah and that's what i started to do you know that gave me the courage to to sell out my company because my enthusiasm wasn't there anymore mm. and as i lent into that enthusiasm i actually fed into my own inspiration and the things that wanted to come into form into manifestation over time were happening because I was already in a place where I was actually in much more peace with myself and more joy and living from more courage and aspiring to something greater, but being very con content with actually everything I have in my life. Mm. Because that's when gratitude comes back into it because you cannot forget the blessings that we actually have. And to me, that is a so much richer place to be living from. Because then you, it, the, the, the charge becomes different. You become the magnet as opposed to seeking everything external. And then the universe will, will meet you halfway constant. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like Joseph Campbell, follow your bliss. Follow yeah. your enthusiasm. Like, yeah, exactly. Bliss breeds more bliss. <clears throat> enthusiasm breeds more enthusiasm. Yes. It's just the nature of it. Yeah. It's... Um, as you're talking about that, or as we're, we're talking about it, is I was catching myself breathing. My attention went to my breath. I was like, that's a, that's a really cool metaphor for what we're talking about. It's just the breath. And that, you know, that drive to manifest and to create would be like an exhale. And you can only exhale for a certain amount of time before you're going to exhaust yourself or kill yourself, before you have to inhale. And that's then catching the vision. That's allowing it to come in so that you can express it out and exhale. I like that. That's cool, huh? Yeah. I was just thinking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just came in. It's like, and uh, then I expressed it out. <laughs> it's, it's very like uh, dooby, 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 doo. That's you know, it. Yeah. Mikko Swami talks about. Mm. There's, the, there's this, uh, the, yes, there's this dr drive forward, but also there is this need to just to settle and be and finding that dance and finding that balance that nurtures. And I always think of um, the metaphor with the jellyfish, mm. you know, that's how it propels itself through the water. It, it has to contract first and then phew, that, that expansion funny. out. And, that, and, and we can think of those in micro or macro elements in our life where we've had times where it's been really painful and that contraction has had to come in. We've needed to go through that crystallization like the, the caterpillar into the butterfly metamorphosis to then expand back out. I've met two insects in one sentence. Man, you did have like all these like metaphor on top of metaphor. Like. <laughs> this is what happens when you get a good night's sleep. It just comes, keeps coming Where is this out. fella going? I know. Holy Moses. Come on. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, it's good stuff. But I think we all know this. And a lot of your listeners are like on this on this pulse. 
Right? Totally, but, but it's good it's, to be reminded. No, and I, and I would what I would love to see, and the reason that I'm really passionate about this work is that I would love to see a world that nurtures that in. You know, we we have such a such an important set around uh, the clothes that you wear, the car that you drive, the relationships that you're in, the, the job that you're doing. You know, the diplomas on your wall, mm-hmm. like all these things have such a high um, you know value to us in our society. But it's like. Why is there not such a high uh, high value put on? What's your meditation practice look like? How how much time have you spent today pausing and feeling, mm. letting your emotions express? You know, getting into your body, stretching your body. You know, all these different things that then nurture that relationship to that soul self. Because ultimately, you could the amount of stuff that you're going to do in your entire life is going to be a fraction of importance to the being that you. Oh. right <laughs> and I, if, if you listen to this and you haven't listened to the podcast that they did with Robert Gilbert the other mm. week drop into that but the, he was speaking about this very thing yeah right and he spoke about at the end of the day when you get to the point of the gate of death that's what he, he called it yeah. you know when it's your moment that you're going to take your last breath that's going to be all of us whether you like it or not at some stage mm. it's not the certificates on the wall. It's not the the finances. It's not the the house. It's all not, the things we worry about. It's not all any the of things that. that are cons- none of it. None of it. <laughs> yeah. And it, and he, he used the term of, but it's the essence and the being that that because he, he's talking metaphorically as well. But they've crystallized into your soul energy. Mm. It's those those lessons and I you know one of my greatest drivers has, has been contemplating that and looking knowing that when i look back i just want to know i did my best Mm. but my best from a place of heart and soul as well we need the analytical mind we need the ego otherwise we can't function you Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. in this in this world but at the same time if we start meditation brings those questions forward right we start to space brings that forward not being completely wired and stressed out and constantly in the rat race loop day to day starts to allow us to ponder and bring those things forward you know and i think we we especially as we once we you know through maturity i mean i used to did ponder on it in my 20s though in 30s but i guess as you start to reach your 40s and go into your 50s the you know your values do start to shift and your priorities Mm. but yeah. if we had like you said if that is nurtured from day dot into the, our schooling systems into the, 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 our family cultures again and reconnecting back and having that around boy it would change everything mm. I, I, I feel that's what's being that's what we're being called to do oh a thousand percent so there's no accident our retreats sell out yeah every time like the, the that's the thing, right? And mm. I, I really hope this comes across for wherever you are in the world, wherever you are listening to this, and wherever you are in your journey in your life, you know, I think that everything serves us. No matter if you follow that enthusiasm, if you follow the spark that lights you up, because we are so conditioned to make money and to have security and, and have this way to become free, while, for, like, We've got it backwards. If we start to nurture and light the fire and ignite, the way will start to reveal itself. Mm. And we can live in a much more harmonious place. And I hope, my hope is like the, that when I teach or share on, I want to be an example by my actions, not just my words or being up on the whiteboard or see this, but in alignment because it's part of our DNA and what we what we do. And I believe live and flow is a clear example of us aligning and following our heart and soul mm. and it's coming into creation. Mm. And we're only just started. Mm. And I've I've truly feel that's possible for anyone out there if they have the courage to lean in and go in that direction. Because the masses aren't, ain't doing it. Mm. It is shifting, though. Like, it, things are starting to 
priority. I think values are really starting to change within people slowly but surely. Mm. Yeah, but the call's getting louder as well. Exactly. You can't n not hear it. No, well, you can. You can choose not. You, you can choose. It's a lot of energy it. not to hear it these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> just go turn up that TV a bit louder. <laughs> a lot of energy, a lot of volume. Yeah, a lot of um, distraction and a lot of pain. Yeah. To resist that flow that's wanting to move. Through. And I, I actually truly feel in this lifetime now that everyone is consciously or unconsciously going to have to make a decision which way they want. Mm. Do you want to do you want to lean into the world that you want to see and be part of and create and be that example of that, mm. or do you want to resist all that and continue to hold on to an old paradigm, mm. which is getting intense? <laughs> <laughs> the ship's sinking. The do ship. You wanna, do you yeah, want to well, sink or swim? Yeah, and I like I I I don't think and. I, you know, I don't think everyone's going to, like, there, there'll be a divide. I think that's what will, and it's happening. Mm. And more and more people, more and more people start actually listening to what they know within their heart and soul and leaning into that. Then they will, we will be contributing to that, that future. Mm. You see the wheels turning. I don't know. I, that, that, I'm, I'm kind of sitting with that one. Yeah. I don't, I don't like the idea of a divide. No, but I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying intentionally, yeah. but, but I feel there's going to be a point where you're going to have to make a decision. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying divide and conquer. <laughs> Throw the flag and maybe divide the wrong way, but over time, but who knows? Mm. Who knows? Once, if, if enough people start embracing this work, then there'll be enough shift in momentum, like, a, like an avalanche, where people will start moving more and more in, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Bit by bit. Yes. I'm, I'm, op I'm an optimist, mate. I'm, a, I'm definitely an optimist. <laughs> no, I hear you, mate. I'm with you. I'm just, I'm just trying to process what you're saying. It's yeah, just, that's all right. Some deep, deep thoughts there. Yeah. Up, yeah. What you're talking about. It's like, because what, what I was thinking is, um, you know, being in this work and, and how, you know, it's come, it's evolved out of what the soul calling. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have thought my way to it. Because the, the, work, the work that I do yeah. and, the, and the way that I facilitate with, with the sound and the, and the breath, and like, that's a process that didn't exist like, in the way that I do it. Oh, and only it you can do it the way you do it. Yeah, but I didn't even know what I, how to do it or that it was a possibility. Correct, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 totally. And I can remember in meditation, like, I, was just, I was just really down in my life and, and feeling like, unfulfilled and like is this all there is and like you know we all go through and it's like but i had enough uh, support around me to introduce me to practices of, of just sitting just being present mm -hmm. being in meditation meditative state allowing just listening and i can remember in those moments you know this is like 25 30 years ago in my meditation and the, like eyes closed and i would see this vision of like a microphone it's like this dark room, and then there was just a microphone. I could see the grid oh, yeah. of, of the microphone just in front of me. You never told me that. Man. No, I don't think I've ever told anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just see that microphone. And I was in L.A. I was in my 20s. You know, what does that mean? I'll be famous. I'm going to be a, a, ah, yeah, a rock star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to next Jim Morrison. Man. Yeah, yeah, or Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. So, yeah, in my naivety, I see a microphone and I'm like on a stage, there's lights on me and I'm like, what, what does this mean? And my mind's grappling with this and yeah. trying to understand it. And I never could from that mindset that I was in, but my soul was trying to communicate a message of mm. voice, of expression, of sound. And I had no concepts of what any of the things that I did not do now. But it was years later when I did see my, find myself on a stage, a particular stage that I won't mention, and, <laughs> you know, hundreds of people, and I was in front of that, the crystal balls in front of me, 
the mic right there and I usually when I do the sound my eyes are closed and at a moment I kind of I didn't want to hit my head on the mic oh, yeah. you know because you kind of lose and I opened my eyes and there was that microphone it was the same and the, the way the lights were hitting me and the way that room was dark oh, was the same yeah. image that I saw 30 some years ago in that meditation and I was like ah that's where I was going you know what I mean a thousand percent can I ask you a question? And, and this is, I, I know, like, uh, some, somebody's come up to me once and said, why, why, why do you ask questions you already know the answer to? And I was like, well, I'm on a podcast and there's other people that won't know and, and I'm actually just... You're making me nervous now, right? No, no. <laughs> better be careful you answer I'll be grading oh, you. Oh, no. Um, questions. No, no, questions. but thinking, well, why isn't it that it, it, with the, those visions and you know you're in your 20s the soul just doesn't lay it out for you mm -hmm. yeah make see, it clearer that's, a, that's a, <laughs> you do know the answer to this so <laughs> i'm gonna get your no, answer yeah, no that's a great question yeah yeah go go well that's the, that's the whole reason that we're here is to learn for ourselves yeah is to guide ourselves i mean we even just had that happen and we have to have it happen all the time in the coaching we always say, like, we're doormen. We're holding the door for people to find their way, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, and, and oftentimes, it's like, it can be perceived as we, we're not holding the hands of the people going through their overwhelming or challenging moments because in that holding, we're not giving them the opportunity to find their own feet and to grow. And from a soul's I believe from a soul's vantage point, it's all it's already written, it's already there. Every possible permutation of experience that we can have is there, and it's not good or bad, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just where where do you choose? Where do you want to go? Let's see how you how you experience and start to move through your life and your understanding of what this is all about. I think it's through, you know, we wouldn't have learned to ride bikes if we didn't fall a few times. We're falling then to find the balance so we can ride. Yeah. So that's my answer. What's your answer? Oh, exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it, it is that. And it, it's without the, like, people get frustrated, people get angry. There's all these emotions that start coming through, and you're like, mm. why is this happening to me? And it's like, well, mm. We, the, you know, for me, our lessons come with a shift in perspective, and then we can start taking different actions from the choices that we make from the perspective that we see in every moment. So without that pressure, without that ability to embody an experience, to actually maneuver through something with your own innate consciousness, if that doesn't happen, how is, the, how is your awareness going to expand beyond what it knows? Mm. I just don't know how it can, because if you give somebody to something on a plate, mm. the value is never going to be there ever mm. in all that way. And, you know, one thing, even culturally now, we don't get taught to think for ourselves <laughs> is a big component, right? Oh, it's massive. So it, it's like nurturing and setting up all those innate quality in us. So when it comes back to these glimpses, these insights, these wisdoms that, that start to reveal themselves and start to show through, because ultimately they're coming from the eternal now mm. that's ever present, the omnipresent, mm. that's beyond this linear, linear 3D. Let's start our day at 9 a.m. and chug along to midday and then come to 3 you know, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we just got the, we've just bought into this complete linear concept that, that, that is only ever now, though, these moments, these mm -hmm. breaths. So when those come through, I get excited. I, oh, I, I treat it all like an adventure and, and lean into what's possible, what's coming in, and, and percolate with it and never try and chase it. That's it. That's exactly why I was sharing that story. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for wrapping it up. No. <laughs> it's just that it's an adventure and you're just going to get these glimpses. And it's like there's something. It's there's a something, treasure hunt. It's a treasure hunt. For, there's something far greater than what you can conceptually understand or comprehend from your vantage point now that is, that is summoning you, that is calling you. And it's like each, each one of us, every single one of us, 
has a unique version of that calling mm -hmm. that's wanting to reveal. And it's, and it's like, none, none are going to look the same. So when you say like, you know, this is, this is possible for everyone, you know, this kind of what we're doing, having a successful business, like that, that's going to be completely different for each individual. And it's like, yeah, I, I hear this concept. Somebody was speaking once. I thought oh, that's pretty neat, but it's like, imagine you're, you, you know, you, you're a spiritual being having a human existence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you're the spiritual being, you're, you're, you're the divine, you're there, right? And, yeah. and, but you can't actually have a physical experience. I can't touch Matt right now. But hey, man, how are you? You know, laugh his jokes and, and whatever it is. But then, so it's like, you almost could be, imagine if you're, you've got a, a mansion, you've got every toy under the sun, you've got everything you can ever have. You click your finger as it comes to, to pour, yeah. and, and you, you got it all, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, I guarantee you'd get pretty bored. Mm. And you'd be like, oh, I want to step, I want to step over there. What's wrong behind that tree over there? And, you know, there'd be a point where that, that, that seeking and you, there's no growth ever going to come from that. Mm. So it's like, well, why not set up parameters where you can come and have a human experience mm. and you get to go on your own little mini adventure. And the way we set up the parameters this time is you're going to see if we, if you're going to get the lesson, if you're going to allow the growth to then happen because you don't know. Mm. And that's the only way you're going to learn. Mm. And then we step in and have, have those experiences, you know? Absolutely. Wow. Oh, we're warming up for the retreat, mate. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, we better wrap it up soon because we're, we're going to have um, over 30 beautiful souls coming through. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting in that pool. You're going to get in the magnesium pool? Right, I need it. Right, yeah. Sick. Oh, Boom. Yeah. yeah. I actually jumped in the magnesium pool last night. We actually held a, a group coaching call. Wait, I was in too. Don't oh, just no. take all the credit. No, but I had to drag you up there, mate. Oh, you were no, like, no, you're no, all no, I, I, I couldn't find my There's swimmers. My swimmers. <laughs> well, let's get in the pool. Come on. It's nine o'clock at night. Wait, I got up there and you were, you were have... hopping and puffing, shaking. So cold. I'm skinny I got... dipping with you, mate. Sure. <laughs> oh, God. No. So, so anyway, with the magnesium pool and that was, that was an amazing reset. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm excited. Wrap up the podcast. Anything we want to add to this? I don't even know when it's going to go live, but this is, we are now early May 2023, probably mm -hmm. maybe June. Uh, we'll be in Portugal. Mm -hmm. if you, and July 10th to the 15th, five nights, me, yeah. Matt, and Petra. Come join us. Come join us. We've got people coming from all over the world. Still a few spots left there. And then we're going to be back in here August. Yeah. For a three night, about four day. That's two thirds full at least. Mm. Um, this one sold out like two months ago. Uh, this is the quickest one I ever sold out, actually. Mm. And we'll be up and down the coast, right? We got. Yep. Lots of events. Lots. Still happening. Yeah. If you, if you live in like Tasmania, Perth, Adelaide, apologies, we haven't been there yet. <laughs> but we've been figuring out. A way to systemize Matt sound gear so we can fly there. Yeah, and um, and we don't know the areas very well. So if you happen to hear this and you live in one of those areas and you go, oh, this location would be great for a, a workshop mm. uh, and so forth, then we'll come. You know, um, the momentum continues to build and we're loving it. So yeah, all those things. Anything else? No, mate. You summed it up. I feel like. Uh... Feel complete. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, legends. Much love. Thank you. And uh, catch you soon.